Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for coming uh, to my PhD final defense. The title of my talk is Optimization Based Control and Planning for Highly Dynamic Leg Locomotion. Uh, during the lockdown in 2020, a YouTuber built an obstacle course in his backyard for squirrels. Um, as you can see in this video, a squirrel is traversing this uh, obstacle course in American Ninja Warrior style and eventually reach the goal, which is a pile of nuts. So this uh, behavior is very impressive. And uh, to transfer part of the agility of this squirrel to leg robot, will be able to open up many possibilities, uh, including disaster response, transportation, and space exploration. So the motivating questions for my research uh, is that given a dynamically capable leg robot platform, how can I stabilize a highly dynamic motion and how to produce the intelligent motion plans? Uh, in order to understand how animals could achieve these kind of highly dynamic motions, I investigated the animal motor cortex and I found out that the motor cortex is not a single region in the brain, but several. Each region of the brain is in charge of different aspects of the motion. So from the left, we have uh, uh, Sarah Bellin, uh, which is responsible for fine tuning the motion and balancing. And we also have a primary motor cortex, which is uh, responsible for executing the movements. Uh, on, and we also have a premotor cortex, which is uh, for planning. And we also have a prefrontal cortex, uh, which is in charge of uh, abstract tasks such as uh, problem solving. So from the left to right, you can see that the uh, issues that each region is responsible for uh, goes from short-term behavior to long-term behavior, uh, also from reflexes to preflexes. So this biological inspiration uh, uh, is very inspiring because an analogy could be drawn uh, to robotics. Uh, each region of the brain of the motor cortex, uh, in my opinion, corresponds to a topic in robotics. The cerebellum is similar to the reactive control in robotics, uh, where an instantaneous control input is uh, generated to stabilize the robot around some equilibrium point or reference trajectory. If optimization-based method is utilized for this task, then normally convex methods will suffice. The primary motor cortex uh, responsibility is more similar to the predictive control, or specifically model predictive control, uh, or MPC. Um, to, solve MP, to solve MPC, uh, both convex method as well as nonlinear program methods are applied uh, in like locomotion. The premotor cortex is similar to the uh, trajectory optimization, where almost exclusively formulates a nonlinear program and solve it to, for a relatively longer horizon. The task of a prefrontal cortex, in my opinion, is more similar to the search and planning problem in robotics, where a very abstract problem is posed and solved. And in this domain, the dominating method used is a sampling-based method. So from the left to right, we can see that it goes from very feedback-based planning into very feedforward-based planning. So based on this uh, framework that I just uh, talked about, uh, the topics I'm going to int introduce today are the followings. First, I'll briefly talk about the design and the synthesis of a dynamic leg robot. And in this um, section, a quadratic program-based reactive controller, which uses a three-dimensional single rigid body model is implemented to achieve a highly dynamic squat jumping experiment. Then I will talk about the rep representation-free MPC where a linearized three-dimensional single rigid body is used. After that, I'll talk about a mixed integer convex program-based trajectory optimization where a planner robots are uh, investigated. Finally, I'll talk about the hybrid sample optimization motion planning algorithm where a, a planar point mass model is used. The major ob objective of my research is to achieve dynamic leg locomotion using applied optimization-based method on real robot hardware. The approach that I take is bottom-up and behavior-driven, and the math that's going to be presented in this talk is mainly involving formulations for optimization. 
So can first, I, I would can I ask a question. Yes. Can you go back two slides. One more. So, what's your justification for, you know, connecting the cerebellum with convex optimization and the prefrontal cortex was sample based. I mean, you know, can you really justify that scientifically, or is this just uh, kind of an interesting way to think about it? Uh, it is. It is just an interesting way that I uh, frame uh, my viewpoint in robotics. It's no scientific basis to this. I mean, in biology, scientists don't agree on everything that I present here. So it's just an in interesting way that I think robotics should should talk about more. Uh, in terms of behavior horizon. Uh, in this structure, many in interesting topics can be explored, I think. Okay, and is your main point really that, um, you know, these problems could be split up into being processed at different levels, but you don't necessarily know where they're being processed. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm fine with that, thanks. Thank you. Okay. I would like to first talk a little bit about a custom leg design. So uh, in this figure, we can see a uh, leg, robot leg module, which is composed of three motor modules, uh, including a abduction adduction motor, a hip motor, and a knee motor. The linkages are made of lightweight materials such as 3D printed plastic and carbon fibers to reduce the moving inertia. The total mass of this leg module is less than 900 grams, and the link weight is less than 10%. So based on this design, we can make the simplifying assumption that the uh, lag, lag inertia does not play a major role in, com in compared with the torso dynamics. A special design of this motor module is a compound planetary gearbox, where a two-stage planet gear is utilized to achieve a relatively higher gear reduction ratio, 23 to one, in a very compact design space. So using this uh, custom leg, uh, leg module, we assemble a full quadruped robot. And the first experiment that we did on this robot is a dynamic squat jumping experiment. A quadratic program-based uh, reactive controller is used to achieve the jumping and landing. So the desired body range composes of feed forward terms as well as PD feedback terms. The error in the orientation is defined using the VMAP, which maps a skew symmetric matrix into a three by one vector. A quadratic program or QP is formulated whose objective is to penalize the deviation from the desired body range while satisfying the box constraint on the ground reaction force and the ground reaction force should reside within the friction cone. We use this uh, open source QP solver called QP Oasis to achieve a high control frequency of 4,000 Hertz. And because of this, we can crank up the damping gain and they mainly utilize the reactive damping to achieve the stable landing performance. So based on this hardware, we went ahead and uh, used this quadruped robot to investigate a representation free model predictive control. Here's a brief introduction for MPC. Model predictive control is an online trajectory optimization method, which is perfect for handling constraints. At each time t, we get a new measurement of the state of the robot by some state estimation algorithm. And based on that, we formulate and solve an optimization problem with respect to the control input within the prediction horizon. We then only apply the first optimal control during the time from t to t plus one. And once we have arrived at t plus one, we repeat the whole process again. And the, the uh, control just marches forward in a receding horizon fashion. The template that we use for this RFMPC is the three dimensional single rigid body model. The state includes the position and the velocity of the center of mass and the rotation matrix to represent the body frame, as well as a vector for angular velocity. The control to the system is the ground reaction force, which is 12 by one vector. The dynamics follows the single rigid body dynamics. Here specifically, we use the hat map, which is the inverse map for the V map. It maps the three by one vector into a skew symmetric matrix. 
uh, such that x hat y is equal to x cross y. A very popular method to uh, parameterize the orientation in robotics is to use the Euler angle, which is very easily visualized as you can see in this figure. However, the problem with the uh, Euler angle is that it can have some singular poses. For example, in the middle, uh, in the middle figure here, when the rotating axis of the orange ring and the blue ring uh, align, the rotation loses one degree of freedom. Mathematically speaking, this singularity happens when the matrix that maps the Euler angle rate to the angular velocity becomes singular. And this happens when, in this case, the beta angle is equal to plus or minus 90 degrees. In order to tackle this problem, we propose a representation-free model predictive control by directly using the rotation matrix to represent the orientation. To formulate this representation-free MPC, we take a look at the rotational dynamics. This dynamics is not trivial because the rotation matrix R evolves on the SO3 manifold. We utilize a variation-based linearization method to approximate this nonlinear dynamics. A three by one vector C is used such that the C hat is equal to delta R. So the delta R could be, visually, uh, could be visualized as the vector that lies on the tangent plane around the orientation at the operating point ROP. We take the Taylor expansion of the matrix exponential map. So RK is approximately equal the orientation and the operating point times the exponential map of delta R. And then we can get a linear expression for the predicted orientation. The variation of the angular velocity delta omega could be defined as follows, so that we have an expression for omega K. Once we have RK and omega K, we can plug the expression back into the original rotational dynamics and obtain a linear dynamics with variables being the matrices. So, but this linear rotational dynamics with matrix variables does not lend itself well to the MPC formulation because MPC takes vector variables instead of matrices. So we propose a vectorization procedure which transcribes this linear rotational dynamics with matrices into linear, linear dynamics with vectors. To explain the procedure, if we want to vectorize a matrix product A times the matrix B, which is two column in this example, it is equal to a block diagonal matrix with A on its block diagonal and the vectorize the B matrix. Once we have the linear dynamics with vector variables, we can use the forward Euler integration scheme to obtain discrete affine dynamics, where the state include the position and velocity of the center of mass and the Cassi vector, as well as the angular velocity vector. Uh, the control to this system is the variation of the ground reaction force with respect to the operating point. So up to this point, we have obtained affine discrete dynamics, and we now look at the cost function. So the major problem for the cost function is actually the orientation error. Let's take a look at the ori original orientation error. It is originally defined as the matrix log of the uh, desired orientation Rd transpose times the predicted orientation Rk, and then we take the Vmap to get a three by one vector. This is a nonlinear matrix log function and does not fit into the uh, QP formulation that we, are, we want to formulate. So we use a uh, approximation method for the orientation error. So the approximate orientation error is defined as the matrix logarithm of desired orientation RD transpose times the operating uh, orientation ROP, and then we take the Vmap of that, and then we plus the linear term uh, Cc at uh, prediction step k. So in this way, we can get a 
we can get the orientation error in the linear form of the decision variables. So using this approximate orientation error, we can construct the cost of orientation in quadratic form. If the matrix Q is chosen to be positive definite, then this cost is guaranteed to be positive definite. In addition to the cost functions, we also impose the following inequality constraints to make the robot work. The first one is the friction pyramid constraint, which prevents slipping of the contact foot with respect to the ground. In addition, we impose the force box constraint to um, limit the force that the robot exerts on the ground. Up to this point, we have obtained a quadratic cost function, an affine dynamics, and linear inequality constraints on state and control. We can then transcribe this MPC problem into a quadratic program problem with the decision variables being a concatenation of delta u and x. We then solve this QP in our embedded system using a custom QP solver that we have developed called QP Swift. The following video shows how this RFMPC is implemented on a hardware platform. The same RFMPC framework is utilizing all of the tasks shown in this video, including the post control balancing and the periodic gates. The MATLAB simulation code is open source on GitHub and the experiment videos are available on YouTube. The running trot and the walking trot are using almost exactly the same formulation with only difference being the gate timing as well as some of the gain values. Good question, Yuran. Uh, the gate yeah. timing and, and trot and, and whatever gate is prescribed, right? Yeah, it is uh, time-based. So, yeah. Okay, all right, thanks. So these uh, experiments are dynamics, but they do not show the extensive feature of RFMPC. So in the next video, we're going to show a controlled backflip like this. This motion is special because it passes through a singular, a singular pose in the Euler angle expression. As you can see, in the green ring on the lower left hand side, the yaw angle around the uh, singular pole suddenly changes from zero degree to 180 degree. So if we utilize oil angle for, uh, to represent the orientation, you will destabilize the system. However, the RFMPC framework could stabilize this motion. The following video shows the other features of this controller, which is its repeatability and robustness in terms of the uh, height of the stage. It can also be easily integrated with other uh, skates such as trotting. And in the last video, uh, uh, in this video, we show a experiment where we try to balance the robot at a singular point. And finally, we show an example of a hardware failure where the electric connections is loose in this case. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to shift gears and uh, talk about a mixed integer convex program based trajectory optimization. Uh, there has been a lot of methods for trajectory optimizations. Uh, the popular methods include single or multiple shooting method, direct collocation, and uh, differential dynamic programming. The advantage is that there are a lot of available packages for this method, and they are targeting general applications. However, all of these methods requires initial guesses, and if the problems are not initialized, if, if, if the problem is not initialized properly, the solution can be trapped in local minima, or worse, in infeasible regions. So in this uh, chapter, I'm going to propose a 
mixed integer convex program or MICP based method. The major motivation behind this uh, project is that MICP does not need initial gases and given a grid resolution, it can guarantee to provide a globally optimal solution. So what is an MICP? Uh, a mixed integer convex program is a convex optimization problem with part of its variables being uh, binary variables. So a major drawback of this MIPC based method is the curse of dimensionality. It means that as the number of decision variables increases, the problem quickly becomes intractable. So in the following talk, I'm going to explain how we exploit the structure of the problem and then reduce the number of variables to make the problem tractable. The problem that we are interested in is for lag the robot to traverse rough terrain by executing a series of jumping motions. The height variation of the terrain is larger than the height of the robot so that the robot has to jump to reach the goal. This problem can be formulated and solved as an optimization problem, the objective being the, being the di distance between the robot configuration at the final time and the goal configuration. The following constraint should be satisfied, which includes the dynamic constraint, and uh, the contact point in stance phase should be chosen on the surface of the terrain. When in stance phase, the configuration of the robot should be within the workspace and the initial condition should be satisfied, and as well as the control constraint. So within the control constraint, uh, one specific one that we are interested about is the torque limit constraint, because we want to explicitly impose this so that we can fully exploit the potential of the actuators. This torque limit constraint involves the Jacobian matrix, which introduces non-convexity into the problem, because the Jacobian matrix involves trigonometric terms. You know, to tackle this problem, we adopt the notion of feasible range polytope. The feasible range polytope is the intersection of contact range cone, which in this case is just a friction cone, and the actuation range polytope, which is the mapping from the joint torque space into the end effector space. The feasible range polytope, or FWP, of one leg is a three by one vector in the 2D case, which includes the uh, translational force as well as the rotational momentum, uh, moment. The FWP of two legs is the Minkowski sum of two sets. Um, it is the Minkowski sum of the FWP of uh, each contact leg. A visualization of FWP is provided here. As you can see on the lower left uh, figure, the single stance FWP is a two-dimensional polytope embedded in the three-dimensional range space. This represents the coupling between the force and the moment. However, when the robot is in double stance, the FWP is a three-dimensional polytope. Using the notion of a feasible range polytope, we can transcribe the original problem into a, uh, into a much simpler one. Uh, the original problem involves a complex dynamics because we optimize the ground direction force U. And in the original formulation, the constraints are also very complex because it involves the uh, torque limit constraint as well as the friction cone constraint. However, if we adopt the notion of FWP, we can transcribe it into a simple affine dynamics with the input being the body range F and the constraints are changed into a complex yet condensed constraint, which says the body range should be within the feasible range polytope constraint. The mixed integer range constraint is formulated as follows. Uh, first, we um, divide the C space on, first we divide the configuration space or C space of the robot into three regions. The red region, uh, represents the case when the robot is in back stance. The blue region represents front stance and the black region represents double stance. We then discretize this non-convex configuration space into tetrahedrons and assign a binary variable for each tetrahedron at 
every instant time. If the constraint associated with the tetrahedron is activated, then the following should be true. First, the configuration of the robot Q at time ti should be within the tetrahedron. And second, the FWP constraint associated with this tetrahedron should be activated. Here, the implies operator is implemented using the big M formulation and additional constraints are imposed for physical feasibility. Specifically, the summation of the binary variable along the j-axis should always be equal to one because at every instant of time, the, ro the robot's configuration can only reside within one of the tetrahedrons. So by, so by formulating and solving the mixed integer convex programs, we can obtain uh, dynamic trajectories for lagged robots. In this case, a single lagged robot is able to find a strategy to use the left platform as a stepping stone to reach the goal platform without any initial guesses. And the same trajectory is implemented on the hardware. Using the same formulation, we can solve for a more complex system. In, in this case, a planar two-legged robot. Because the state space of this robot is higher than the single-legged robot, the solve time significantly increases. However, it can be solved within half a minute using the solver Groovy. Uh, one of the potential applications of this MICP-based trajectory optimization is to generate initial gases for to warm start a full-scale trajectory optimization. OK, so now I've introduced the RFMPC and the Mixed Integer Convex Program project. I'm going to next introduce the hybrid sampling optimization-based planning. The objective of this project is uh, similar as before, is to enable single leg robot to traverse challenging terrain. There are two dominant methods in motion planning, one of them being the optimization-based method and the other one being the sampling-based method. As we have seen in the previous project, the optimization-based method is able to handle dynamics as well as control constraints. However, it is computationally expensive. In contrast, sampling-based method is computationally cheap. However, the presence of dynamic constraints could severely compromise the efficiency. In order to leverage the advantages of both methods, we propose to use a hybrid sampling optimization-based planner. In this case, it decomposes the original kinodynamic motion problem into a sampling stage followed by a optimization stage. In the sampling stage, a variant of a kinodynamic RT algorithm is utilized to find a sequence of parabola that connects the star to goal. In the optimization stage, trajectory optimizations are solved at each stance phase for the full dynamics. Stance phase is the period of time when the robot is in contact with the ground and can exert ground reaction force to continuously change the incoming velocity to the outgoing velocity. The motion primitive that enables the hybrid framework is based on the following assumption. It says the extension of the incoming parabola P in here and outgoing parabola P out intersect at the contact point. These two parabolas are parameterized by the incoming velocity v in and outgoing velocity v out, which is also at the contact point, respectively. This motion primitive enables us to decompose the sampling stage from the optimization stage. During the optimization stage, the touchdown state x touchdown and the liftoff state x liftoff are chosen on p in and p out, respectively so that the kinematic path from the sampling stage is preserved in the optimization stage. During the optimization stage, in order to find the stance trajectory, we solve the following trajectory optimization problem, or referred to as TO1. The decision variables are the coefficient of the ground reaction force polynomial 
and the stance time. The objective is to minimize the control effort. While satisfying the workspace constraint, the torque limit constraint, the boundary state constraint, and the friction cone constraint. We formulate this problem using multiple shooting methods in Kasadi and solve it using IPOPT. The problem with blindly sampling V in and V out pair in a state space and uh, just to shovel it to the TO is that there will be a lot of TO problems that will not have a solution. In order to limit the state space that we sample, we pre-compute an approximation of the reachable reachability map offline and then use it in the online sampling based planner to greatly speed up the sampling process. Given a incoming velocity V in, the velocity reachability map is defined as the set of V out such that V in V out pair has a solution in TO1. For example, in the figure below, the velocity reachability map of point one is the red region. And similarly, the reverse reachability map is defined as the set of V in for a given V out such that the pair V in V out has a solution. The reason for computing such a velocity reachability map is that the V in V out pair within this set has a high probability of finding a solution. Once we have constructed such a velocity reachability map, we can perform the reachability informed control sampling in a sampling stage where a variant of the kinodynamic RT algorithm is used to find, to construct the tree that connects the start node to the goal node. So once we have reached the goal node, a kinematic path is extracted from the tree. However, the original path shown as the blue curve here could involve redundant jumps, which is not efficient. So in order to reduce the number of redundant jumps and therefore reduce computational time for the subsequent trajectory optimization, we introduce the following path shortcut procedure. Suppose we want to connect node i and j. We can do so by solving a small scale nonlinear program problem where the decision variables are the outgoing velocity at node i and the in incoming velocity at node j. And these two constraints says that the reachability at node i and j should be preserved. And the following constraints represent the projectile kinematics between node i and j. So because the scale of this nonlinear program is really small, it can be solved actually quite efficiently. And the resultant path is the shortcut path called path star. Okay. Once we have obtained the path star, we can pass this path, we can solve this path uh, to obtain a dynamically feasible trajectory by solving a trajectory optimization at each stance phase. This hybrid planning algorithm is tested on various terrains. And here I present some of the simulation results. The, ob the objective is to jump from the start point shown as the green, green circle here to reach the goal region shown as the yellow box. And the touchdown velocity is shown as the blue arrow and the liftoff velocity as the red arrow. So in terrain A, the robot could find the trajectory to jump monotonically to the right to reach the goal region. And in terrain B, the, uh, the sampling, uh, the hybrid planning algorithm is able to find the strategy with alternating the direction jumping performance. In terrain C, we push the limit of the robot to ask it to jump over a wide gap. As you can see here, the robot is able, uh, the planning algorithm is able to find a strategy to make intermediate jumps to gain momentum and then clear the gap. And once the robot crosses the gap, it may, it learns to, it is able to make intermediate jumps to break and decelerate and come back to the goal region. The same phenomenon could be observed 
in the terrain D, where the robot has to make a wide jump as the last uh, step to reach the goal region. When the robot has reached the platform on the right-hand side, it makes intermediate jumps to redirect its momentum and therefore clear the gap. So we have implemented this algorithm to find a solution and implement it on the real hardware robot. So in this video, the robot performs three consecutive jumps where an intermediate jumps is performed here, such that the robot is able to redirect its momentum and jump on the high platform. Okay. So in conclusion, uh, the underlying hypothesis of my PhD work is that the mobility intelligence on various levels are required to achieve animal level, to achieve animal level agility. To validate this hypothesis, I investigate four control and planning problems with varying behavior horizons. First, I introduced a design synthesis process of a small and agile quadrupedal robot with high jumping capability. A quadratic program-based reactive controller is implemented and tested on, on the hardware platform. Then I present the representation-free MPC framework where the rotation matrix is directly used to represent the orientation. And this enables us to achieve dynamic motions that involve singularity, which is previously not achievable using Euler angle. Then I talk about a MICP based trajectory optimization algorithm, where we formulate and solve the terrain traversal problem as MICP for two jumping robots. Finally, I talk about the hybrid sample optimization motion planning algorithm, which is able to generate a long horizon behavior for a simple robot to traverse challenging terrains. So based on the uh, work during my PhD, some of the possible future research directions are listed below. The representation-free MPC framework is a general framework that is able to uh, is it likely to open possibilities for controlling extremely acrobatic three-dimensional motions for both ground robots as well as aero robots, especially with the emergence of uh, lightweight and uh, high-performance high computational units. And secondly, recent work on the warm start of MIQP from Russ Tedris group and the robust MIQP algorithm for embedded systems is able to open up possibility for real-time hybrid MPC in leg the robots. And based on the second point, the possible application of real-time MIQP solver could enable a cascade control framework with varying behavior horizon. For example, the following. The following framework consists of a high frequency, medium frequency, and low frequency optimization uh, method Okay, finally, I would like to uh, say thank you uh, to the committee members at, at, and my mentors. Uh, thanks for Professor Park, who has introduced me to robotics and has spent the amazing three and a half years here at UIUC. Thanks to Professor Remus, who has been my savior and uh, provided me with encouragement that helped me overcome a lot of hurdles, especially last year. Thanks to Professor Chris Hauser, um, for helping me to evolve a course project into an ECRA paper. I would like also to express my gratitude to Professor Dalarou for his course Convex Method in Control and Professor Patrick Wensin for his insightful advices. I would like also to say thank you for my, to my collaborators and colleagues, especially a big shout out to Dr. Jonathan Hoff for he has been a role model for, uh, for the survivors uh, like myself. I would like also to thank folks from the Hubo lab and the Intelligent Motion Labs. And last but not least, I would like to say thank you for my friends and family for their support, and especially my wife, who is incredibly in intelligent and wonderfully childish. With that said, I'm happy to take any questions first from the committee members and then from the audience. <laughs>